Um, obviously, renewals and automation has been a big topic in this particular conference. So, if you haven't heard of us, we were new track. I'll just give you a quick introduction about who we are. But we're really here to talk about um, one of our partners, VMware, and their journey over the last four years with automation um, for renewals and the long tail. Um, so, what I want to do is quickly introduce you to um, myself, Matt Cagney. I'm the CEO of RenewTrack. Um, David just got a little bit um, anxious there and skipped through a couple of slides. Um, <laughs> we've also got David Pinto. Um, we've been working with David for about four years now at VMware. He's the Senior Director of um, Strategy and Operations and Planning at VMware. And he's here today to sort of share that story and their journey um, over the last four years and all the lessons that they've learned. Um, and so I'll quickly introduce RenewTrack. So for those who haven't heard of us, we're an organisation that we're an organisation that purely just dedicate, dedicate ourselves to what I call democratising the renewals event. So how do we empower every single actor in the chain, your sales reps, your customer success, your channel partners, and ultimately your customer? And how do we make sure nobody goes unaware of um, an upcoming renewal? Nobody goes unreminded. Um, because we're all getting busy, so we need to have a proper cadence of reminders in, in the proper time and frequency that works for your customer. And we want to democratise that event for your um, channel partners. So we allow them to enter their margins, allow, provide them with automation rules, and ultimately that manifests itself in a digital interactive quoting experience for your end customer. And what I mean by democratising that event is we're all becoming a lot more socially defunct now. We don't want to deal with um, people on the phone, Present me your information digitally and what your offer is and what your next best offer is. So we use that renewals event as an opportunity to one, engage your customer, but one, to, number two is to make sure that every customer is presented with the appropriate upsell or cross-sell or transition their journey. And that's where you track. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hand across to David for the next 40, maybe 35 minutes. We're gonna save some time for questions for five minutes at the end. Um, and over to you, David. Sure. Well, thank you, Matt, and good morning. Uh, first of all, I just want to start by saying thank you. I checked the agenda this morning, and I think you guys had a choice of 12 different sessions to attend. <laughs> so the fact you're here with us today is very much appreciated. So thank you for that. I'm going to go out on a limb um, and suggest that neither of us, or neither of us, any of you guys out there are rocket scientists, or what we do on a daily basis including renewals automation, is rocket science. There are many parts of the machine that we have to carefully orchestrate and manage, but executed correctly, renewing, I'm, I'm sorry, automating your renewals motion can be very <coughs> beneficial, just some of the, the top level rewards you can see right here. By a quick show of hands, how many in your room manage their renewals by a dedicated renewals organization. Okay, I know you do. And then how many in the room have a customer success team that's also responsible for their management of the renewal section? Okay, so most of us have a dedicated renewal section. However you manage your business, I'm hoping that today over the next 20 or so minutes as I share some information, that you can take some nuggets back with you if you've already started your automation journey or if you decided to embark on such a journey. So we'll go through the genesis. Why did us, why did we at VMware decide to embark on such an automation journey? We'll obviously look at the RenewTrack VMware partnership. We'll walk through very, at a very high level how we at VMware approach our automation renewals motion. And as Matt suggested here, we'll have plenty of time at the end for Q&A. Of course, we have limited time together today. I'll, I'll be coming at this at a very, very high level, kind of give you an overview of where we are on our journey. Myself, Matt, you see the, you see the guys with the Renew Track shirts on, will be available after the session for any follow up discussions you may have. Just a few words to level set before we get going. For those who may not be familiar with, uh, with VMware, we are a software manufacturer. About a third of our revenue is derived from subscription business. 
we're on a continual we're on a continued path of changing our perpetual legacy business to that of a SaaS and subscription motion. And for those of you who are familiar with, with VMware, you're probably also familiar with a little acquisition we're the subject of. Of course, renewals is just one part of the customer journey. But again, for today, we're going to focus exclusively on the renewal side. For VMware, renewals opportunities allow us three core motions. One is to renew the perpetual license, of course. The second is to renew the subscription renewal. And third, and this is really where a lot of our focus is right now as a company, is at the time of that perpetual license renewal, we're engaging the customer on conversations around converting their perpetual license and then engaging us with a subscription-based relationship. Like I alluded to a few minutes ago, we have a dedicated <coughs> renewals organization. I am part of that organization. And of course today, I won't be sharing any company information, but as we go through the next few minutes, I'll be sharing some directional insights. And lastly, renewals automation is not, and I repeat, it's not this ugly, gray, scary looking autonomous machine that sits unattended in the corner of a room. Okay, that's what it's not, churning out these 100% renewal rates. What it is, renewals automation is, it's a combination or balance of utilizing technology for those back-end productivity tasks, for those repetitive tasks, those time-sucking tasks that we can then automate. And it's also balancing the, the need for humans. We attempt to reduce human input and action. But we also recognize the need for human intervention as and when required. And we'll, we'll touch on that as we go through. So, why did we at VMware decide to embark on such a journey? Of course, if you, if you consider the rewards that I flashed up a few seconds ago, we were looking for those top line rewards. But also, we looked at customer expectations. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're all familiar with the top end of the custom stack, right? These big spenders, they demand, they enjoy, they expect these high, close relationships, one on one relationships. But we're also very aware of our long tail. These customers don't expect that high touch. And actually, a lot of these customers really don't want that high touch. And they prefer this low touch vendor relationship. Okay? And so it was with that that we realized, yes, we can do things differently. We can engage the customer differently, but still meet the customer expectations. As we went through that initial uh, thought process, we, we reminded ourselves that we had to still stay true to the basics of what that long tail customer expects and also what we need to deliver. Meaning, for us to enjoy those intended outcomes, of course, we have to approach the right person, make sure we're, we're uh, communicating with the right individuals, with the right messaging at the appropriate times. For us at VMware, our intended outcomes in the renewal department or organization include many, but really pivot around three core motions. Increasing the in-quarter renewal rate, of course, let's make sure the customer renews. It's driving that perpetual to subscription conversion at time of renewal. And of course, the top line growth here around customer ARR. So as we start to look at our strategy, as we, start, as we started to develop this blueprint, we ask many questions, such as how do we engage the customers as they want to be engaged in the long tail space? And as importantly, just because internally within our company, certain processes and mechanisms seem to be working, how would we improve what we do internally to improve our customer experience? What I like to use, and this is a very classic example, I'm sure most of us have seen this, but just as a reminder, we're all very familiar with ketchup, with Heinz ketchup and its iconic glass bottle, right? I think we've all, we've all bought one of these, we probably still have these in our, in our kitchens. We've also been this guy. 
and I'm going to take the last as kind of a, 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 a yes, you, we have been this guy. What we thought was working inside, from a customer experience perspective, really wasn't meeting the mark. And so, I don't know who it was within Heinz, but they converted glass into plastic, they flipped that thing upside down, they made it squeezable, and almost instantly, Heinz reaped the benefits. Why? Simply because they looked internally, they looked at what was working, but how we could we do things better, and met the customer where they wanted to be met. Now, while it's always great to highlight the wins, right? I never come across this product. And I probably know why. Wins are great to be, uh, to be highlighted, but we also have to recognize when you do try and break the mold, when you do try and go against the grain, sometimes you're gonna get a miss. And this product, for obvious reasons, was a miss. Now, the key takeaway here is, remaining with the status quo, you will grow. You will probably grow over time. But if you look at the status quo, if you try and break that mold, and you start to experiment, your growth will be accelerated. Right? And that's, that's the mindset that we took off with as we embarked on this journey. As we start to really look at our, product, um, our strategy, our blueprints, we obviously ask ourselves these candid questions that we should always be asking ourselves on a, on a very regular basis. And we came to three conclusions. Three, three very simple conclusions. One, the first one was very, very simple. The challenge was, how do we actively engage our tens of thousands of long-term partners as they want to be engaged? We knew that we needed to utilize technology <coughs> to drive scale. We understood that we had to come at this with a standardized approach to drive uh, repeatability on a worldwide scale. And we also recognized that we had to really drive discipline around data decision making to ensure that we were driving predictable outcomes. Hugely important when you deal with long-term business. As far as execution, of course we looked internally within the company. Did we have the, uh, the capabilities to execute such a play? We looked externally. And of course, eventually, we partnered with Renutra. That was four years ago. And since partnering with, with Renutra, we are utilizing their, their mass scale capabilities has allowed us really to round out our long tail customer coverage, as you can see here. As far as evolution, where did we start? Where are we now? So, 2019, we started with a very humble, small, geo-specific pilot. And what that allowed us to do was to gain operational stability between the two companies. That gave us confidence then to expand, and we expanded across that one geo. As we were expanding, we learned, we made a few mistakes, but we learned more of how we could drive channel adoption of this program, which gave us the ultimate confidence then to scale worldwide, which we did a few months ago in 2022. Productivity since day one, just a few numbers here. So if I compare the amount of business that flows through RenewTrack today versus day one back in 2019, the pipeline, the dollar value of pipeline has grown by about a factor of 50. The transaction account, the number of renewal motions that flow through the, the, uh, the platform has grown by about a factor of 32. And then the amount of countries covered, we've increased by a factor of 25. So again, going from 2019 to 2023, where we are now, we've seen some, some pretty uh, impressive growth as far as productivity. During that time, as we've gained confidence, as the channel has become more uh, adoptable of the platform itself, we've actually grown the dollar ceiling. I've got to be very careful how I explain this, but we've grown the type of renewal that we push through the platform, meaning when we first started, we only looked at sub $10,000 renewal opportunities for our extreme long tail business. As we've gained confidence, as we, as we have gained experience, 
We've grown to the point now where certain parts of our machine, our automation machine, now manages sub $1,000 renewal opportunities for certain parts of the machine. Additionally, again, because of RenewTrack's mass scale capabilities, we've been able to reach the customer earlier on in that renewal cycle for obvious benefits, and we'll go through some of those in a few seconds. So we're initially, we were reaching the customer 90 days out from the renewal. We're now initially contacting the customer 180 days from that renewal event. So we've taken a very, very quick look at how the partnership has matured. Let's now take a quick peek behind the curtain here and take a look at how we at VMware have approached our renewals automation. Starting with the blueprint, the blueprint we, we intentionally kept very, very simple and easy to execute. We focus on three main areas of automation. Content automation. And what I mean by that is, when do we contact the customer? How do we contact the customer? And with what do we contact the customer? Quoting automation. And let me be very clear here, when we say quoting, we're not simply sending out MSRP or estimated pricing. We go through a series of activities with the partner, with the distributor, that allows us to send specific pricing to a specific customer for a specific renewal event through a specific incumbent uh, partner. Okay, so again, we want to be very clear here that the pricing is, is is a mature type of pricing. And of course, as time goes by, the machine is developing and, and producing and spitting out the end, many zeros and ones, right? So we, we're now embarking on, uh, on the early days of data automation as well. And again, we'll go through that very briefly. So if I apply the blueprint to the engagement, uh, the, the, the timeline of engagement with the customer, again, starting with content automation, between day 180 to day 120, we'll send out a series of communications and they're in the form of email that highlights the upcoming renewal uh, activity itself. And if appropriate, it will also give notification of conversion opportunities to that customer. Again, perpetual to subscription, if that's appropriate <coughs> for that one renewal of it. We'll also have the ability to send them to dedicated landing sites to learn more about the product, about the renewal, about the cross up sort of opportunities. And that will happen in the first 60 days. The 30 day period after that, we then start to engage the channel with, the, with their margin management. Again, the distributor will take their pricing, they'll apply their margin. As a result of that, the partner will receive their, their, their price. The, the margin is applied to the partner price, which of course then produces the customer price. At which time, at day 90, until the renewal, we'll then start to send out a cadence of renewal uh, emails, communication. Of course, while all this is happening, we start to receive those zeros and ones, right? The, the data that comes from the machine. And we start to look at the customer behavior. We start to look at the channel behavior, what's happening. As we're looking at that data, we'll start to receive signals. Is there an opportunity for a net new sale? If there is, of course, we'll pass on to the appropriate team. As importantly, and some will argue more importantly, we'll start to see those churn risk indicators develop and come out of the, of, of the motion here. And of course, once we receive those, immediately we'll place some risk mitigation activities <coughs> on board that one uh, renewal risk. So if I, just, if I just take that same timeline, give you a quick visual here of what that looks like. So again, we'll send out these personalized emails. Again, if, if appropriate, we'll send the, the customer to dedicated landing sites, right? We have the ability to monitor and to view who is visiting where, what they're doing when they visit, right? So we're starting to get that data. Margin management, like I just explained. And then the cadence of these email notifications that reach the customer. So we'll start at day 90, and we're still playing, we, things can adjust over time, but what we find now is at day 90, day 60, 30, day 15, and obviously day zero, you receive notification, until at which point you renew, 
would, would obviously shut down that communication. Now, if you do hit day zero, actually, if you hit, if you hit day 30, we'll then start to signal to our renewal reps, hey, this customer hasn't engaged, they haven't renewed, you may want to call this person on the phone and have a live conversation. But all that being said, how is the platform being adopted? Like how is the channel, how is the customer participating in our motion here? So some very, very high level numbers just to share. We are reaching most of our customers, right? 99% of the database that we, uh, that, we try and, that we try and send to is being reached. And what that, mean, what that means is there's no bounce back. Those bounce backs that we do receive obviously goes back into the company, into VMware, and we'll update the contact information database and we'll, we'll push them back into the system, right? And we'll, we'll engage them again. Of those customers that we do receive, the majority of those customers are proactively engaged with the material. They're opening up the emails, they're clicking on links, they're visiting these landing sites, so we can see the activity. We've got some work to do when it comes to channel participation, but you know, encouraging numbers, we can do better on, on that side as well. So overall, the, the, the platform is being integrated into the partner distributor daily life. Let's take a quick look at our data, uh, data automation efforts to date. Like, like I mentioned a few times, behavior I think is important when it comes to this data and how we analyze it. Very much in its early infancy, we start now to look at and identify the certain patterns of behavior. What is a normal pattern of behavior that ultimately results in a renewal, a successful renewal event? And what does that look like? What is the customer doing in that journey with us to ultimately click renew or, or renew through their partner. And so we, we're, we're now beginning to understand what that looks like. What does normal behavior look like? And it's us now to have the internal discipline to say, okay, this is what will typically happen. Let's trust the machine. Let's trust the machine to continuously monitor that, that customer's behavior until which time we see an adverse behavior. It can be a positive. If we see an opportunity for a net new sale, of course that warm lead will be passed on to the appropriate team within VMware. Adversely, if there's a churn risk, but if we see behavior that's suggested, you know what, this, this looks like this could be in trouble. There's, there's, there's some danger here. Again, we'll pass off that risk or that flag to the appropriate team or teams within the company. So, quick overview, right? We kind of flew through that pretty quick. Um, but let's take a look at how we're doing with our journey, right? And share a few insights here. My 14-year-old son tells me I'm a, I'm a pretty hard, I think I'm a pretty fair grader when it comes to homework is homework. So I'm gonna take the same approach here, right? There's, there's some things we're doing okay, and things that we, as a company, we can we could definitely look forward to in the future. So from content automation, as we develop our understanding of that customer behavior, I think the first step for us is to look to develop persona-based materials. Eventually, you get to the point where we're so knowledgeable about this customer that it's very customer-specific, right? I think that's the goal there, is to reach. Quoting, <coughs> hopefully you understand here that we're pretty mature in the renewal motion when it comes to the quoting side. I think as time develops, we can start to integrate more maturity into our quoting capabilities. And again, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, very, very early stages here around our data automation. I like to think as we, as we mature in that aspect as well, we can get to persona-based, the customer, individual customer-based level, eventually using that information to develop future playbooks and to improve our strategy moving forward. So, I didn't take 35 minutes, but I, I took some time. Before I do leave you, um, just a few thoughts, a few reminders for wh wherever you guys are in your journey, or if you're looking to embark on such an automated journey. The first thing, obviously, have a very clear, easy, executable strategy and business plan. Know where you want to go. Know the steps that you should take to get there. 
recognize the importance of customer segmentation and understand how these different segments want to be engaged. Realize that automation is a balance between digital and human. Don't be afraid to experiment. You may have a miss or two, but look inside your company. Understand that just because things are working doesn't mean that we can't break that status quo. And yes, while there are many moving parts to this engine, my last thought to, to leave with here is, renewals automation really is not rocket science. So with that, Matt, I think we have, we have actually got quite a bit of time here for some Q&A. I think we've got heaps of time. And just a, a hygiene aspect, I notice a number of people trying to take photos of the slides. I think we'll put our email addresses up and we'll deliver the pack to you so you've got you know rich quality stuff that David presented. So questions first, you young man in the third row. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a number of us in this room that are listening to you very, very, uh, in an engaged way because your experience mirrors exactly what we're going through. Um, be it the conversion through su subscription and SaaS, uh, be it the automation, the customer segmentation, be it the relationship that you have with the channel partners. So there's a number of things here that are very relevant to us. Um, I've got so many questions, I don't know where to start, but I'm gonna just ask one. With respect to the data telemetry that you talked about, is the automation happening in your team or is it happening because of renew track tools? How are you driving that data for the expansion and growth? So with the at-risk assessment, is that your team? Is that the tool set? Sure. So if you didn't hear in the corner, the question is around data uh, telemetry. Who's, who's actually doing that work? Uh, RenewTrack is, is taking that data. They, they see that data on a daily basis, of course. They do share with us already the, the you know, dashboards. We can see at various stages of the renewal where that customer is on their journey. Um, but it's very much me or any of us within the company going into a dashboard, right? And we, we can pick out the information. And we have regular connections, right? Zooms, whatever, just to highlight risks and, and opportunities. But where we want to go with this heat mapping is for it to flag us out of the system. Tap me on the shoulder. Hey, there's an opportunity here for a, for a net new sale. Go chase this down. Or, hey, there's a risk. Let's ensure this thing doesn't collapse. Right. So right now, my short answer is it comes from, from, from a new track. Down the front, yeah. Uh, two questions. One, are you paying your renewal reps Two, uh, actually, it's that one. Okay, <laughs> let, me, let me repeat the question. The question is if the machine takes care of the renewal, does a live individual receive credit for that? My short answer is yes. The reason why that is, is because there is this opportunity or necessity for that human interaction. We don't want to segregate, otherwise, we're going to cause internal conflict, conflicts. Yeah. Yeah. And then the other part is. Uh, with this automation, or, or even outside of it, are you also working in, in uh, selling to the customer at the time of renewal? I.e., like, you know, this customer, yeah, here's your renewal, here's your term options. Oh, also, do you want to buy additional licenses, Metro Quantity Right? Or anything of that nature? Yes. Again, my short answer is yes. Um, one of the, obviously, the benefit of a live individual is they can have this live discussion, right? And immediately I can signal with, I can signal to you as a salesperson my, my intent to buy more, right? What we are working towards is recognizing that customer behavior digitally and having that same type of reaction time. Does that answer the question? Yeah. yeah. I think the, the idea in that aspect is to make sure, and, and I think VMware does this well across the board, is, is they pre-package up the appropriate upsell opportunities at the same time for the quote. And so, you know, normally we might generate them, they're pro 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 provided by VMware. And so we democratise that and present that to the customer <coughs> in that digital renewals experience and say, hey, Mr. Customer, 
here's what we believe is your next best offer that you should buy to increase our ARR. Thank you. One more, one down the back. Yeah, so one question, we, we, we're a hardware company at the end of the day, so we have a lot of assets and capital managed, which in a renewal motion, you get a copy of it with, did you move some, did you retire some, did you add some which you didn't know about? Um, do you face some of the same problems? I know your software, maybe it's not as, as complicated, but I mean, that's been one big sticking point on our renewals, is, it's just the accuracy of the quote because we don't have the accuracy of the installments, right, or the assets. Yeah, so it really is, it's, it's, so the question again is accuracy of data, how does it impact is the renewal motion? I've been reminded this many times by the Renew Track team. You give us, you give us bad data, we're going to give you a bad experience. Right? So that automating the renewal motion doesn't fix bad data. Right? So it's, it's incumbent upon us to provide that appropriate data set to Renew Track for us to do what I'm claiming we're doing here today. Of course, you know, aside from automation, we do have our own data integrity issues, like I think most of us here do, right? I think we're pretty honest. But um, regardless whether we go through automation or these top spenders, you know, we've still got that install base that we have to closely monitor and, and guard. Yeah. Martin? Zach, Mark and the SA Young guy. <laughs> <laughs> First question for you, Dave. What are your source data systems where you store your license and customer data? That's is it awesome. SAP or Salesforce or what is it? Uh, we, we use uh, we use Salesforce. Mm -hmm. If you if you ask me anything past that, I'll have to s discreetly check my uh, <laughs> my Zoom or whatever. But um, we we have you know, we're, we're a big house, right? So we use all of the standard um, platforms and systems. If the question is how do I ensure that if I approach Renew Track with the same request, that my systems could be incorporated? We, we've got many, many systems. One of the reasons why we approached with NewTrack initially was because of the, the amount of siloed and disparate systems internally. That's one of the reasons why we, you know, we're working with NewTrack because they, they allow us to bring all that together and we use all the big brand systems and platforms, right? Probably too many, to be honest, but if, if that was the question. Yeah, yeah. So then follow up question to Matt. Yeah. Uh, we are using SAP to store our order and, and customer and install based data and Salesforce for opportunity management and quoting. Is your system correct? And that's, look, it's you know, not to talk about specifically VMware, but they use the, the different an ERP and a CRM, and we're essentially taking those pieces of data to create that renewal opportunity and then quote the variations off that. Yes. Great. Young man again. <laughs> so back to the channel discussion. Uh, channel pricing is often complicated, right? They've got transfer price, they've got incentive points, they've got so you don't you're not even supposed to know what the end user pricing what really is. How do you guys do that? Right. So good question. Good question. We don't influence the pricing, right? We'll send the net pricing to the distributor, net of any discounts or promotions that are happening. Just as we do today, we send pricing, we send pricing to a distributor for a non-automated renewal. Right? They they apply their margin, creates the customer, creates the partner price, partner does the same, creates the customer price. Um, so we, we're not getting any more visibility into that. We're not getting any less, but it's no different relationship that we have with the customer pricing, regardless of what we see. We're actually quarantined away from the pricing that, that the renew track sends out to the, to the customer, if that was the question. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that's yes. hidden from VMware. Yes. Same with all the customers. The DISTI and the partner don't want the vendor to understand what that end price is that they're quoting to the customer all the time. Yeah. Does, does that final communication to the customer appear co-branded or does it appear to come from the, from the partner? No, it's, it's co-branded with the partner. So, so just repeat the question for those Sorry, in the back. The question is around receiving the email notification as the customer. Yeah. What, what do I still need on the, on the invoice, basically? Right? Yeah, the, well, we, we actually have the opportunity to offer the, customer, uh, the partner an option. 
do you want it to go out the N-word? Do you want it to go out just your brand? Do you want to co-brand it? And it really is just a template that we that we signal, you know, per per transaction. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that was that was helpful. No, are you doing any direct uh, customers with this automation? No, everything we do right now is through distribution. Okay. The primary reason is purely because of the long tail. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I'm but, assuming. But on that, there is a, there's kind of a bifurcated process. Okay. I think VMware runs this process really, really well, whereby for a particular point of the renewal book, they'll go through the channel. Yeah. But then they also notify the customer at the same time and at a particular SLA, if the channel hasn't performed their next best action within time, then VMware reserve the right to direct that end customer to a VMware checkout experience. So no yeah. customer goes unnotified or without the ability to to yeah, purchase that and, renewal. And, and that's the other standard we have with... It's, yeah, it's an awesome model, right? And it's, we, we underpin that and direct them to yeah. it. Just, just to follow on from that. So like I mentioned, uh, if we see a day minus 30 to renewal event, that there's no activity in our Salesforce stages, yeah. and we see that it's just, it's just dormant, of course, we have the right then to go to the customer and say, hey, are you renewing? Did, the, did your partner not follow up? And we can then... Yeah, we can take that in the direction that we need to take it to secure that, that sale, the, the renewal. Yeah. And, and that, the part about that, it's also automated for the invoice. It's yes. taken off the table, so it's yeah. hands off the channel. We allow, we're reinforcing your incumbency, but if you reserve the right not to act, then VMware reserves the right to make sure every customer is notified and can transact. Yep. And then, um, last two things. One would be cancellation. So if the customer, says no, they don't want to renew, they want to cancel. Does Renewtrack then have a set of automations that goes back through the system to yeah. update assets, put it, you know, all that jazz like that? Yeah, so of course, initially when we see in our Salesforce or the signal from the behavior patterns that there is this risk or churn risk, we're going to throw people on top of that, right? Like to try and say, right. if at the end of the day, we're not going to save everyone, we'll, we'll flag Salesforce. Renew trap will pick up that flag within Salesforce and shut down. But it's only until we, a live person within VMware, so someone live, hands up, you know, holds up the hand and says, you know what, this one's done, that then the system understands that. And, and then from that, you know, there's, a, there's a, a backflow of information that flows back into VMware. We take care of all that back end close now. Right. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Does anyone else have a question? Yeah. Ladies, <laughs> ladies, <laughs> there's a question right here. We'll get to you. Yep. We'll, get to you. we'll come to you for next later. Do you see your end customer channel option and uh, do you, between wanting to switch to a different channel partner, and uh, do you facilitate that? Do you, how do you handle that so that it doesn't get all everybody in trouble? Sure. Of course, because, because of the data we send to a new track, the incumbent partner is the partner of record that we transact through, we, we, we intend to transact through. Again, if we notice through our Salesforce that we don't see any movement in our Salesforce stages, that will get picked up. At which point on day 30, minus 30, we'll go through that motion again and try and save. And if part of that motion is trying to save with a live person is working through another partner, then we're going to go with another partner. But if your customer doesn't usually initiate that, say, I'm not happy with this, even 180 or whatever it is before expiry says, I don't want this channel, I want to go a different way. Do you facilitate that? Yes, we would. Again, through a live person. Yeah. And, and, and the system also does that, um, what we call channel incumbency reassigning midway through that renewals journey as well. Because we find that a, a lot of the time partners are swapping disties and, and so forth during the quarter, and, and that can be a real pain as you've already set your renewals motion, so we do that on the fly. Question down the back? And we'll go here. What are, what are some of the metrics that you guys measure for internally and for your partners to say, hey, it's been a pretty successful program? Sure. Well, we look at a few things, right? One is, are we reaching the audience that we intend to reach? Right? And again, that really comes down to, <laughs> that's another way of saying, are our contact bases, contact databases, are they good? Are they bad? Right? Uh, one of the side benefits of working through such a platform 
is that you can see that bad data because it's coming back to you as rejected emails, right? Very, very simple and basic. So that allows us to go back into the company, again, update our contact databases, push that renewal back through the system. As far as channel adoption, that was a question as well. We focused on our, I mean, you can imagine a company of our size, we've got tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of, of partners, right? Throughout the, throughout the globe. We've, as we go into a new territory, we'll focus on the top volume partners. And that's why you see our channel adoption about 78%. As time allows us to, we'll start to then go down to tier two, tier three partners, and start to engage those partners on the benefits of renewal automation. <coughs> so this time next year, maybe I can stand up and say we're 83%. So really I think the, the adoption is upon us to educate. So I think once we educate and get in front of the uh, front of the partner and or the distributor, we start to recognize the interest and the adoption. So it really is upon us to get out there as we move forward. And, and I think the other part is, you know, during quarters and QBRs, has that DISTI or the partner taken action in the platform? One, to set their automation rules, update their context, or add their margin and, and, and measure that and have they issued that notice to the next actor in the chain? Um, and then the VMware team can hold those partners to account. Actually, you, you're not going to meet your IQR this quarter because you haven't issued your renewals, you haven't added your margin, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, lady in the back. I have a question. The accuracy of your database is the hardest, and uh, it seems like you have a really good handle on that. So is it through the partners that you have to kind of make sure they're updating the database so you have the right contacts? Or is that something that automatically happens when a customer is using your data? So I'm assuming these are all kind of B to C customers. It's not site-wide licenses where you really don't have the exact individuals. Or how do you handle that? That's what our Yeah, so honestly, it's, honestly, it was surprising when I saw that 99%. Um, for as much as we complain, and again, I'm, I'm saying we, but I'm talking about we out here as well. For as much as we complain about our data integrity, um, our, our basic information, is the contact information is pretty clean, right? Uh, and, is, and like I mentioned before, we use that basic information to kick off that, that communication with the customer. I would anticipate as it gets closer to the partner, they've even got cleaner data when it comes to that contact information of the customer, because they own that relationship with the customer. Um, but of course, we can always do better. Um, once we do understand that we have a rejection, right? Maybe the person's moved or they're longer there, then you know we will put somebody on there to update the information and or reach out to the partner and say, hey, who is the who is Sally's replacement? What happened? Right. So we'll, we'll use a combination of internal and partner to try and clean that data up more. Now, if you were to ask me, how is other data within the company? I guarantee it's not 99% accurate or clean. Right. I won't make that, that claim for sure. And just to, just to elaborate on that as well, the partners and the, and the distributors have the opportunity to essentially bulk upload their updated contact information because they have many different stake in, stakeholders at that end customer. So we apply that logic and then and they can persist that in the future as well. So it's hands off. What they do it once and sit and forget it. Kevin, um, I think you said you're using this for your indirect or your long tail business, but the, the tool itself, right, for your bigger customers, the, the idea of being able to track it and having email sent out to it seems like a great that process <coughs> throughout the, the pyramid. Are you using it for your so organization skills? So the question is, we currently use it for our long tail business. Why not use it for non-long tail? Which sounds like <laughs> part of a question to me, Matt, but anyway, I'll, I'll answer the question. Um, it's a good question. We've, we've, we've put an artificial ceiling on the business that we run through for a new track. For various, re various reasons, right? We have our own uh, in-house renewal reps, right? That have a coverage, we have a contracted uh, renewals force that covers not the long, long tail, but they cover more of our commercial business. Um, but yes, it, the, I, I say that we use it for sub 100, for some of our business. We could use it for sub a million if, if so be. It's not the restriction that the new track has, 
it's what we've put play to that scene for sure. And I think there's been a perception for a long time that you know digital sales automation for the long tail is for some one some one thousand dollar opportunities, some ten thousand dollar opportunities. But more and more we're seeing with other vendors is you know some of them have a quote that might have 20, 29,000 line items in it, and you can't humans can't do that. They can't deal with it, and they've still got a quote though. So we're we're starting to use automation to quote those things, and it's it's quite hard to compute if you've got twenty nine thousand serial numbers for want of a better term and you're trying to figure out what's the service or subscription I attach to that. The mapping and all that kind of stuff is a, is a nightmare and a lot of our customers call themselves quote monkeys before they use a tool like ours. So we're starting to see those the resistance points in the market for this type of automation sort of push up to, I think the biggest renewal is what, $3 million potentially, Randy, we've done from an automation perspective. Can I add a current? Yeah. Just to say what we're doing. So we have started our automation journey and we are actually utilizing a tool, um, not retract yet, but maybe. Um, and, uh, and we're utilizing a tool where there are basic motions that every one of my renewal reps has to do. They always confirm if the right person is the right person. They always send budgetary numbers. They always talk about the cancellation notice because it's in our contract. But it's certain things that every single customer we touch is gonna get. So we build out templates. And now what the, the reps are doing is they're dropping their contacts into those template cadences so that they get those emails and as the reps or as the customer responds, they're just responding to that response. They're no longer having to go write out each thing or copy paste from another email or do whatever. We're trying to automate all that and then we're trying to automate process as well. Like here's when you go and prepare budgetary numbers. Here's when you go and check the SMPC data. Here's when you go and do X, Y, Z. So, we're, and we're doing that at pretty much all levels. So, well. so that sort of, we're just up on time. Thank you all. I think that was really, oh, one more question. We got time? Yeah. Not a question. I just feel for the sake of transparency, I have to let you know I am a rocket scientist. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. We'll come to you for the next questions, I'm sure. <laughs> Guys, thanks again. Again, I know you have many opportunities to be where you can be. Thanks for joining us.